After living in the field for three weeks, jumping 60 to 90 kilometers and carrying 80 pounds of equipment and more, and eating Arctic ration packs, which gave us the shits, we were exhausted. But we still had battles to fight. The night of the 11th and 12th of June. We're on the outskirts of Mount Harriet, and to get there, we've got to run through an Argentine minefield, which has been shelled by artillery fire. Once there, we go bunker to bunker, firing at anything that moves. I've got Richie with me because he's the youngest. I see a shelter in front of me and open fire. I don't know if Richie threw a grenade or not, but there was a loud explosion. And when I looked up, there were Argentines standing with their hands in the air. And I remember looking at the shelter and thinking, I've just killed some guys who were trying to surrender. I remember the quiet and the snow falling. I need to check my sections, okay? Richie, okay? Okay. Andy, okay? Okay. Butch, okay? Okay. Gaz, okay? Okay. They're all okay, but now we've got prisoners to deal with. Okay, mate, get down, will you? Get down. Hijo de puta, matate a mis amigos! Fucking down, I say! Fuck down! Fucking down! No, come here! One of my section called me over to some fallen Argentines, and when I got there, I realised that one of them was speaking in English. He's got a belly wound. And I remember as I was trying to console him, he began to talk to me about having once visited England and something about Oxford. And then he died. My job now is to search the wounded, the dead, the prisoners for intelligence. I'm looking for notebooks. Maps, anything that will help us. And then I was ordered to bury the dead, which is kind of absurd because I'm stuck on a mountain made of solid rock. So if he's already in a hole, I'll leave him there. If not, I'll drag him to one. and roll him in. We then cover his body with his own poncho, or dirt, or rocks, and then mark his location with his helmet and his rifle, so others can find him later. I remember this guy. He's been shot in the face. And I remember when I was searching him, I came across a photograph of his family. So I left it with him. It wasn't intelligence. Sometimes when I'm on the internet, I come across a picture of a dead Argentine soldier sprawled across the rocks who's been shot in the face. And I think, is that my guy? Because he keeps popping into my head. On that night, the Royal Marines and the Powers attacked London, two sisters, and Harriet. Almost 400 Argentine and British soldiers were injured or killed in those few hours. During the process of rehearsals, I had concerns about why am I saying I instead of we? Where are the stories of the Royal Navy, the Welsh Guards, the Scots Guards? Why are we not talking about the battles, Goose Green, Tumbledown, San Carlos? Do I have the right to stand here and talk on all those that went to war? And where are the fucking British dead in this play?
On the morning of the 14th of June, the last day of the war, I was flown from Harriet to the outskirts of Port Stanley. On the 14th of June, after spending a night in a minefield, I was sent to Port Stanley to set up a headquarters. On 14th of June, I was in the Mountain William. I didn't go to Port Stanley. El 13 de junio, atacaron Wireless Ridge. Y el 14, nos replegamos a Puerto Argentino. La última noche, les tiramos con nuestros morteros hasta que se enterraron en el barro. En la mañana del 14 de junio, nos dan la orden de replegarnos al pueblo. Yo estaba con el cabo primero Figueroa y Sergio Oscárate. Con todo el grupo bajamos hasta un camino y nos empiezan a caer bombas por todas partes. No teníamos refugio, ni trinchera, un lugar donde protegernos. Sergio se había retrasado unos metros porque tenía los pies congelados. Con el cabo primero Figueroa y otros soldados nos quedamos a esperarlo. Las bombas nos empezaron a caer cada vez más cerca y le digo, Sergio, deja las municiones. Él deja las cajas, abre una, levanta una banda de balas y me dice, ¡No! Todavía tengo esto para los ingleses. En ese momento, una ráfaga de artillería cae encima nuestro y nos vuela por el aire. Yo estaba aturdido, nos seguían tirando, tenía miedo y veo que Sergio queda tirado en el piso. Me arrastro hasta él y en este momento está todo oscuro para mí. No puedo ver nada. No puedo ver el cuerpo, no puedo ver la sangre, no puedo ver nada. Solo escucho voces. Trataba de levantarlo, le hablaba y escucho la voz del cabo primero Figueroa. Vallejo, tenemos que dejarlo. No podemos hacer más nada. Él traía una manta para cubrirse del frío y tapamos el cuerpo de Sergio. Desde este lugar hasta el pueblo no sé cómo llegué. Las primeras imágenes que tengo es ver a los ingleses por primera vez frente a frente. Los veía más grandes, más viejos que nosotros. Cuando arrived en Port Stanley, and saw the Arden Times for the first time, they were dirty, disheveled, and they looked numb. All around the town, there was shit everywhere. Human shit. I can't remember how, but I ended up with two young conscripts, and I got them to clean up the mess. Okay, you lot, let's get this. This is fucking disgusting. Look at this fuck. Why are you fucking shit everywhere? I said, clean it up. I said, fucking clean it up. 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 Me metieron prisionero en un galpón con 500 soldados. Los galpones estaban llenos de comida que no había llegado a nuestras posiciones. Cornevis, queso, dulce de batata. Como no habíamos comido en los últimos días, nos comimos todo y salíamos a cagar afuera. Un inglés me dio un balde para que juntara la mierda y yo me rebelé y me puse un fusil en la cabeza. Cuando arrived en Port Stanley, those of us who were there on the 2nd of April were invited to put the Falkland Islands flag back up over Government House. And then we were ordered to disarm the Argentines. Right, you lot, weapons and helmets. Come on, let's go. Move, move, move. Weapons and helmets. Come on, move it. Weapons and helmets. Keep it going, keep it going. Weapons and helmets. Move, move. Weapons and helmets. There were thousands of them. And the weapon piles just got higher and higher. We then took them to the airfield and put them on a plane back to Argentina. 